Hey guys, I'm Max and Tune. Welcome to a game called The Bottom of the Well. Click. I've played a little bit of this game before. I think I recorded it. But I don't know where that... I don't know where that footage went. So I'm just going to... What's going on? Okay, I'm just going to click this new game button. So this is a roguelike, I think, type of game. It's I played it once and I don't remember it very well. So let's just click, let's, let's customize our Alice. You can customize your Alice down to individual stat points if you wish. Although it is not recommended for your first playthrough, it is however advised for, free for subsequent playthroughs. You have, you have to invest online points before you continue. Okay, so we have Clicking on the icons will give you a short description of what they are. Plus, to add a point minus a dragon point, you have to invest all nine points before you continue and stack have a maximum of three. So we have survival, a combination of calculating pragmatism and experience. It represents Alice's ability to stay out of trouble and if trouble finds her to deal with it effectively is an invaluable skill in the post-apocalypse. Supplies, the skill, this skill, in general, represents Alice's ability to organize her supplies, both food and others. A high skill means she can carry more things in her backpack and also influences the availability of food and certain items. Fitness. This skill represents Alice's level of fitness. A higher fitness will allow her to complete more physically strenuous tasks and also improves her overall resistance to radiation. There is a typo right there. Okay. Careers? I'm not sure what that... Career. That's probably career. Alice is majored in English, which is not the most immediately useful skill in the post-apocalypse. The career stat is part skill, part representative... Part representative of her position in academia, which might be less than useful in the post-apocalypse. It might, however, open up some interesting venues of approach. Social life. This represents the time Alice has spent honing her ability to function in a group, either as a leader or a productive group mother member. A social Alice is likely to make more friends and influence people. Unlike other skills, this represents the level to which Alice commit has committed to her current relationship. In the post-apocalypse, such commitment might not be of any particular use, however, unless one follows it to the bitter end. Okay, I'm just going to get the default Alice. Default Alice is capable of finishing the game to its true ending, but not necessarily through all branches. Is Alice is career motivated, friendly, somewhat lazy, hopeless, romantic, with no survival skills at all. She makes up for it by being a good organizer. Okay. So we've got three points in career, two supplies, two social life, two dating. Okay. Sure. We'll just go with that one. Dream Diary, September 13th, 2015. I had the weirdest dream in my life. I'm waiting for Joe to come online so I can talk to someone about this. God, uh, morning, eh? Morning. Do I click now? Did you catch the anniversary reading last night? No, well, I tried, but I fell asleep. Listen, about that. You fell asleep? Oh, come on. Alice in Wonderland is like our favorite. Let me finish. Something happened. I was turn it, tuning in on my radio. You're such a Luddite. Amazing, I can even catch you online. Shut up, I'm not a Luddite. I just like analog things. Anyway, I was tuning in to the broadcast, and I must have hit the AM switch or something, because suddenly the channel changed to something else. What? Aliens? Oh, oh, government-run number stations? No, it was weird. It was this weird, like, white noise at first. I, it's hard to explain why I was so drawn to it. I could hear snippets of some melody, maybe lyrics, but the signal was weak. So you turned it off and continued looking for the Alice broadcast. So I went out on my balcony and tuned the antenna around until the signal came through clear. It sounded more like music with the odd signal in the background. When logic and proportion have fallen sloppy dead, the white knight is talking backwards and the red queen's off with her head. Oh, so somebody's pirate radio broadcast of golden oldies? It felt like there was something else there, some message that the music was hiding. I know it sounds weird, and then I fell asleep. What a story. No, hear me out. I dreamed, and I didn't know I was dreaming. Do you understand? It was entirely lucid, but like, 
Waking up in another world, except I didn't think of it as another world. Ugh, does this make any sense? You had a super lifelike dream where you didn't know you were dreaming, but you were still lucidly in control? Sounds pretty rad to me. I'm sure it would have been, except for the whole end of the world apocalypse bit in the dream. Okay, so now you've got my attention. Okay, so we're recounting a dream, question mark? So like I said, it was the end of the world. Everything I did that day felt like the real thing. Every touch, every smell, sound, color, every touch. It's important you know that. I wasn't acting like I would in a dream. I didn't know it was a dream. Heavy. There was no warning, no build-up, nothing. Just between one moment and the next, the TV had turned to, turned to the emergency alert system. This voice that sounded like it had been recorded in the 60s told us we were under attack. Were you alone? Yeah, I had a really long day at the office, so I had sworn off social contact for the evening. I had the TV on in the background, just as noise. Wait, what? The office? You mean you've got some kind of real adult person job in this dream of yours? Yeah, actually, at the college. Student admissions office. Hey, don't sound so surprised. I am going to graduate in just a few months, you know. Uh-huh, with a BA in English lit. Shut up. Such skill with words. Anyway, what happened next? Like I said, the TV suddenly turned to the emergency alert system, jacked the volume all the way up to. I didn't know they could do that. The broadcast told us we were under attack right now and that we needed to get to the shelter, that we had less than 30 minutes before the bombs hit. Jesus, sounds scary. At first I didn't want to believe it. I switched the channel, but they were all the same. And then the sirens started. Tornado sirens, flood sirens, I didn't know. And I knew things were serious. So what'd you do? Immediately tried to call Chess. Chess? Who's that? My, um, boyfriend. I mean, I don't have a boyfriend, but in my dream I did. Wait up. Tell me more about this sudden new boyfriend of yours. I thought you weren't in the dating scene. Actually, I've been thinking about putting myself out there. Like, maybe some online dating or something? Although I'm kind of afraid to check OkCupid right now. What if there's a guy there named Chess? Good icebreaker. Hi, I'm Alice. I dreamed about you last night. You were my end of the world, buddy. Funny. Aren't I? You were just... You were saying about Chess? What comes the name of that anyway? I wasn't really. I mean... Yeah, he was pretty hot, I guess? And smart and into me? What more can you ask for? I said, can sense you blushing all the way over here. Maybe I should check my open <laughs> Cupid profile, actually. So what does your boyfriend think? Well, first I tried calling him, but all I got was the pre-recorded network busy message. But the net still worked, so I hit him up there. I mean, we did most of our communications in the chat anyway. And? And I found him, but there was no time for, well, anything. I started typing, you know, holy hell, WTF is going on style stuff. And he just tersely replied he had to go. That's a little blunt. He told me he needed to get his sister. His sister? How come? He'd mentioned her a few times. She's disabled, but lives in a house by herself out somewhere in the burrows. Did he ask you to come too? He didn't ask. I did. I'm going to be outside my apartment in five minutes, he said. Then logged off. I guess that's an invitation of sorts. So what'd you do? Well, I knew that Chess wasn't going to wait for me. If I wanted to go for it with him, I had to go right away. I'd just grab my stuff and go. Making quick decisions at the spur of the moment doesn't sound like you. So what'd you do? Alright, so here are our options. I just... Yeah, let's go go with boyfriend. So I decided to go with Chess. I mean, how couldn't I? He's clearly needed help. Altruistic. How long had you been dating? Cynic. Long enough to know my feelings were real. I mean, they felt real in the dream. Where did the sister live again? In a borough. Practically the suburbs. Pretty far. Chess said he usually takes the subway or a bus. Chess actually lived just down the street. And we always had a customary place to meet. We didn't even need to confirm the place anymore but it didn't seem likely that we would be able to catch a bus or the subway. So how are you planning to get to his sister in less than 30 minutes? Oh, spoiler, the bombs didn't start dropping on us in then 30 minutes. It took longer than that. They did start, though. That's lucky. Yeah, well, it didn't mean we weren't, weren't in a hurry. But you didn't leave empty-handed, though, right? Oh, right, yes. I grabbed the biggest bag I had. A backpack. People always called it magic. You could fit so much into it. Bigger on the inside and all that. I've got a couple slots. Take the flashlight and the map. Let's see if I've got like 
some equipment slots here. What's this? My university ID except it's no longer for student with staff. Doubles as an electronic key card. I could keep that. So I only need spare clothes. I should take the food. Oh, can I just take everything? Is there a reason not to take everything? Okay, yes. <clears throat> These are my slots. Got it. I want the radio. And the food. Do I need both days of food, though? What's this question mark? This is your inventory screen. Uh, can't make changes once you're done, so... Okay. Alright, we'll take... We'll take the food. We should take the food, and the radio, and the flashlight, and the map. That's what we should take. Go on, Burrow sister. Bombs incoming. How did you plan to get through there? Get there in the chaos. The chaos. Yeah, the streets were nuts. Everyone and every, everything and everyone were going crazy. Crashes everywhere, but no one was responding. The street was completely gridlocked. I'm talking maybe 15 minutes after the first announcement here. All it takes is a few cars in the wrong place. But you live pretty centrally, right? It had, it had to be better further out. Did Chess have a car? No, but if we wanted a car, there were tons around. People just left them, keys in the ignition, and ran. Holy shit. Must have been... It really must have been Bedlam. It was. I was so scared. So, steal a car or walk? We discussed walking. It was like 14 miles or something. It'd probably take at least four or five hours on a good day, and this wasn't a good day. Yeah, yeah, probably... Maybe a good start, though. Things might clear up outside the downtown area, and you might be able to steal a car there. Appropriate a car. Stealing sounds so criminal. <laughs> Whatever you say. Any other options except stealing, appropriating a car, and huffing it? Something in between. I know a guy with a motorcycle. He really loves that motorcycle, but I wondered if maybe he'd be willing to borrow it. I mean, for fuck's sake, we're going to rescue a disabled woman. You know him well? Reasonably. I didn't know you knew how to drive a motorcycle. I'm a woman of many talents. So what did you do? <sighs> we get a car here. Like, if we get a car here, can we even get there? But that guy might not let us borrow his motorcycle. Let's... Let's walk. I decided walking was the best option. The whole downtown area was gridlocked. Cars everywhere, people were running down the si sidewalks, and the sirens blaring. It was like one of those disaster movies. No hope of driving anywhere at any rate. But where was everyone going? Most of them were going home, I think. People were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there you were, running away from home. Once I made my decision, I stuck to it, no matter how much I was filled with doubt. Half an hour? Half an hour was nothing. Nothing at all. But luckily, that estimate was completely wrong. Sometimes I'll walk half an hour in the wrong direction just because I stubbornly refuse to believe I'm lost. I didn't know what there was the right direction, but I did try to get there as fast as possible. Although, though, that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. I was swept up in a mass of people and manhandled in the wrong direction more than once. Every few minutes, I stopped to consult the map to make sure I was going in the right direction. Was there any danger? Like, people attacking each other or something? No, I thought we were all going in the same direction, but then I realized the crowd was heading somewhere I hadn't planned to go. A subway station. What'd you do? I was swept along. It was that or get trampled or pinned against some wall. I finally managed to disentangle, disentangle myself at the stalled mass of people just outside the entrance. Apparently it was closed and people were trying to break through the gates. By the time I was out, though, I'd lost a lot of time. Time. Yes. Isn't that the thing you're fighting here? How far away were you planning on getting? Well, a lot further than I had gotten at that point. I was I could practically still see my apartment building, but the crowd was slowly thinning at least, and I actually saw a vehicle in motion, an ambulance, weaving between starred ca stalled cars with its sirens blaring. Okay, so... Are we trying to get to here first, and then go there? I don't know. What'd you do? Uh, yeah, 
yeah, find a car. I'm still not sure how you're ethically justifying this to yourself. I was scared out of my wits and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Fair enough. So how did you go about it? I, um, kind of just jumped into the first open door I found. Of course, there was no key because the driver still had it. He had just been on the other side of the car seeing me sitting there. He had a minor epileptic fit and ran at me, keys in hand. God damn it, Alice. I knew you weren't car thief material. I panicked when I saw him coming and went for the door. He saw me do it and tried to stop me. But in my squirrely state, I managed to close it in his face and immediately lock it. Of course, he did have the key, but I managed to crawl out of the passenger drawer before he got the door open again. Lucky, lucky. Hey, it was my first attempt at car theft, even if it didn't go very well. I'm assuming you stopped after this? I skulked around for a bit longer, but I didn't dare try another car. The next guy might have a gun in his hand, not the keys. So finally, I decided to stop wasting time and start walking. Shouldn't you be finding some kind of shelter? No. We're trying to get to the sister, right? Or did that fall through? Chess's single mindedness was what led me. I was pretty sure this was a monumental mistake that we'd get caught outside and killed for sure. But I couldn't just leave him, so we kept walking. So how did that work out for you? You think it was easy? People had driven out into the sidewalks and left their cars. Everything was a mess. I tried to go down the main highway, but it proved pointless and had to backtrack. I didn't say it was easy. Did you consider running? I, I half ran and half... Start over. I half ran and jogged as much as I could, but it felt like the... But it felt like being late for class. I got tired almost immediate, immediately while the goal was still as far away as ever. Chess wanted to go faster, but he slowed down when he saw I was struggling. The worried look on his face went nowhere, though. And... And, well, once we got away from the downtown area, things were much smoother. I ran as fast as I could. As far as I could. No bombs. Still no bombs. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my luck, but I knew I was pushing it now. What did you do? We were getting closer, so we kept walking. So did you make it? Maybe the bombs were just a scare. No, they weren't. I saw it as a glow high above the town. What? You were outside when the bombs fell? I thought... I don't know, I thought I'd have more time, I'd have time to get away, but I'd wasted too much of it somehow. I was out on the street when the initial shockwave came. There was just no duck and cover, could have saved any of us from, any of this there from that, I don't think. The next thing I know, I'm showered in glass as every window above us shatters. Cars swerved off the road and crashed. Bedlam and light, bright, bright light. I tried to crawl out of the way when something hit me, maybe a piece of building? I don't know, I blacked out. You have a really fucked up imagination, Alice. I don't. It didn't feel like a dream, that's the thing, because you don't wake up in dreams, do you? But I did. Bleeding? Alone? Out on the street? What did you see? Ooh, a new picture. I saw a burning city. Ash rained down, in downtown, far too close, a mushroom town, a mushroom cloud not a mushroom town something entirely different just staring me in the face it was the end of the world i just knew that was there and then jeez and then there was a streak of light and it was actually almost beautiful as it fell from space just a streak of light at only a slight angle i just had time to think no we've had enough before it hit for some reason i elected to stare right at it when it impacted above the ground in a terrible fireball Ugh. Please tell me the dream ended here. Yeah, I didn't really see it though, but I died, eventually, in the dark. Dot dot dot. And? And thus concluded my dream. Well, that was interesting. What do you think? I think it felt incomplete, like there was something missing. That wasn't the way it was supposed to end, you know? dreams are supposed to end in certain ways. This one was, I think. I felt like it was trying to tell me something, but I wasn't listening close enough. Maybe you can try again next night? See if you hear the same recording. Speaking of, what frequency was this on? That's, um, the weird part. When I tried to see, I realized I had hit the right channel, and that it was in fact reading Alice in Wonderland. And this isn't exactly some obscure numbers station frequency on the AM bands. 
Well, maybe you'll dream it next night again anyway. That's the good thing with dreams, you can always dream them again. And maybe do something different the second time around. I think we just got to an ending, it seems. I'm gonna do a second one, I might as well, because we're only at like 20 minutes. Is this our credits? Is it just as page or is there more? Oh, yep, there's additional credits. Fonts. Okay, I assume it's gonna take me to the title screen, yeah, all right. All right, let's do this again. Um, all right, what could we have done differently? A lot, in fact. Um, Dark Alex is a an Alice min-maxed for maximum ruthlessness and efficiency. She will almost certainly be able to survive most of what the world throws at her, but she will not be able to reach the absolute final ending. She's a canny, super fit survivor with excellent organizational skills, albeit without a social or romantic bone in her body. Okay. Um, I don't quite understand this game yet enough to do something like that. So what was the default Alice again? Supplies, full career, dating, social life. So let's not career. And we'll max social life instead. Yeah, this is this is my build. This is what I'm going with. Not exactly, you know, we've got some like a little bit into these, a bunch into these. Okay, so morning A, morning. Did you kiss the anniversary reading last night? Uh, da, 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 da. Is this the same? I think this is the same. All right. Let's get to the game part of the game. There weren't a lot of choices. I feel. I mean, the wrong choice was that I wasn't seeking shelter. That's why I died. Are we? Oh, okay. Clicked. So like I said, it was the end of the world. Everything I did that day felt like the real thing. Yeah, da, 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 yep, yep, yep. No warning. Okay. With some friends. This is different. We were having a movie night at my place, watching... Holy shit, I think it was actually the new Star Wars movie. There was this scene where old Han Solo was just about to get knocked over when the TV just switched. Wait, wait, wait. The new Star Wars? As in Episode 7? On DVD? You know that dates your dream, right? I hadn't even thought about that. Sorry, go on. What happened next? Like I said, the TV suddenly turned to the emergency alert system. Jacked the volume all the way up. I didn't even know that they could do that. The broadcast told us we were under attack right, on, right now and that we needed to get to shelter. Okay, 30 minutes. So what'd you do? Um... We don't need chess. Chess is unimportant in my life. Didn't you try calling someone, like your parents? Of course I tried, but it was futile. The phone network was completely overworked, but the net was still worked fine. What did everyone else do? Everyone was pretty terrified. Some tried to make a joke out of it, but there was something about the voice in the TV that belied every belied that. Once we figured out the net still worked, everyone was on it. So what'd you find? The net was still working, but the bandwidth was severely lacking. The major news networks were either down or overloaded, but all the big search engines defaulted to some kind of government site in super simple, super simple HTML that kind of confirmed it really was the real deal. Isn't the net supposed to be some kind of DARPA invention anyway? Wouldn't be surprised if they had some kind of system in place to take over if need be. Well, they hadn't taken it over. You could still go wherever you wanted. Facebook still worked. Apocalypse proof servers? Nice. It was insane. I tried to get in touch with that brother. He's the only one who's got even got an account. But there's no reply. I spanned my aunts and sent an email to my mother, but I don't know. It felt like I needed to find someone right there and then. And? A group chat. It was spreading through our social network like wildfire. Someone had found the closest old fallout shelter that was actually still operable. Down on 3rd. People are going there, just grabbing all they could and running before the bombs fall. 
So what happened next? You know, I did find you online. <laughs> that must have been useless. I'm all the way over in Old Blighty. Unless things were different in your dream? No, you're still in the UK. The bombs have already started falling there. We... you... Dot 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 dot... You... disappeared. There's nothing more to do. It was only a dream, Al. Sure. So then what? Alright. Fallout Shelter... Let's do it. Let's play some mobile games. It's a joke. I made a joke. The old file shelter was down on 3rd. It wasn't far. Close enough to walk, anyway. Did you think about bringing anything? Oh, right, yes. I grabbed the biggest bag I had. A backpack that had bigger on the inside. Okay. What's this? Emergency chocolate. Flashlight. Oh, I don't have a map anymore. wonder what um, stat that was with. <sighs> Food. Radio. All right. We have the chocolate bar. We have the emergency chocolate bar, which makes me feel like we don't need to get take both food. The question is, do we take the clothes or do we take the sleeping bag okay. the sleeping bag won't do this whole thing but I know it has one it was like the sleeping bag isn't very good or whatever there it is yeah we're gonna take the clothes because like having like wet clothes can be Death. You just die. We're gonna take the clothes. Well, go on. What was it like? Did you run into trouble? You could say that. God, that shelter. So... We headed towards the shelter. I think we were all hoping it was just a false alarm and every tomorrow everything would be back to normal. Like an extreme version of Orson Welles' War of the Worlds broadcast? Actually, the panic that radio show caused was greatly exaggerated, and probably by Wells himself, and it worked. We still remember it. Great ad campaign. Guess that English lit degree is coming to some use at least. Yeah, well, didn't really feel like it. I tr remember trying to think of words to describe the way the streets felt, the way the city sounded. Turmoil, chaos, anarchy, tumult, pandemonium, the capital of hell. Now who's got now who's got a degree in lit? Stop stalling. Yeah, it's just so fucking damn. Like I said, everything felt so real. The panic in the streets, the accidents everywhere with no emergency responders showing up, and the ever-present siren. It was like everyone walked with their eyes to the sky, just expecting to see a flash. Did you make it to the shelter okay? The shelter was actually in the basement of a bar. They used it as storage, it was just handy since there was a door towards the street. But there were no signs of anything like that anymore. I just knew about it from the Facebook conversation. Okay, wait. Isn't the bar you always go to the red bar? <laughs> yeah. Go on, Alice. Did you get in? We went to the old entrance, which was down a narrow side alley. Some of the others were waiting for us there, and a few more came while we said our hellos. It actually felt pretty safe in that big group. We got more people. Look at all those people. The suspense is killing me. So I knocked on the door and then immediately tried the handle. It was locked. Nothing happened for a while. And then the door opened, just a bit, and she stuck her head out. She? The bitch queen. She was this red-headed chick who had taken charge of everything in there. She was the one who originally posted about the place, so I guess she felt she owned it somehow. She stood in the doorway looking me over and basically said, We're full. Like it was an exclusive club. I can't believe they just keep you out for no good reason. Was it actually full? <laughs> Not a chance. There was a sign on the door that said capacity 100. There was just no way there was 100 people in there already. I said as much. She didn't reply. I guess you didn't just let it be at that? I said I wasn't the only one who wanted to get in. I told her there were others out here and that we wanted in. 
That's not a very good argument if the premise is that the place is full. True, but I tried to appear her com her sense of common humanity. I guess she didn't really have that. She just repeated that they're full and we need to look for some place else for shelter. So now what? What are my skills again? Can I can I look at them? Woo 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 woo. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> I don't think I can, so we're gonna try. Hmm. Would this woman respond to reason? That's the question. I don't think we're strong enough. I tried talking my way in. You can't just leave us out here and so forth. She just repeated they were full. There wasn't enough food for anyone, for any more, that we should try some other place to hide. Stone cold bitch indeed. I tried telling her we wouldn't be a burden. We had brought food. I opened my bag and showed her. You're nicer than I would be. What'd she say? She looked at the food and then at the others and she said she could let me in because I had food, but anyone else, anyone who didn't have food would be left out fied. What the actual fuck? What a... Mm-hmm. What did you do? Ah, uh, see, that's why I would have needed two food. I could take two people. I mean, I also have the chocolate bar. All right. Oh, we'll do it. But did you try to get the rest in with you, right? I tried to get in as many as I could. Well, good. So how did that math work out? It wasn't math. It was narrative. Her narrative was, this shelter is full, but we can take people who have their own supplies because we have none to spare. I knew then already it was bullshit, but I had to hum humor her. Anyway, the narrative math was very simple. One day of food for every person she was letting in. So... So we talked about it. But of course I only had enough for myself. Or for one other. Alright, we have a choice. Do I stake off with my friends and my food? Or do I? I don't want to give up my food. And you don't really want to live with this lady. She kind of sucks. I step back from the door, the sound of it slamming shut, still echoing in my ears. This, it was the sound of desperation. I knew there'd be no more opening it. I had to think of something else. What did the others think? They all looked to me for some reason. It was pretty weird. I didn't really think of myself as the leader type. Don't say that. You just declined an offer of personal safety and instead elected to stay with your friends. I think that speaks volumes. I don't. Ugh. It's more complicated than that, but anyway. So did you go with them together or somewhere else? I was pretty sure they'd follow me, but the thought they but the thought of me as a leader, I don't know, it scared me. I thought about maybe heading off by myself instead. So, realistically, what were your options? <sighs> Alright, let's just let's leave town. A little post-apocalyptic group of survivors. Did you have any idea what to do? Well, we needed to get out of downtown the downtown area fast, which left us with few options. And the streets, I can imagine they would must have been pretty bad. You live centrally, don't you? Yep, and yep, the streets were bad, really bad. This is stuff we've read. So, no buses, no metro, and you don't know a car, correct? That's right, and neither did any of the others. But we had a few options. One was to start walking until we got out of the gridlock zone, and then steal a car. People were leaving them with the keys and the ignition just running away. Okay, sounds awful and reasonable. Another would be to try to find a car as soon as possible, and then make a way out of the gridlock. What, like... In the action movies, a truck or a bus or something, smashing through. Something like that. Alright then, so what did you decide to do? We're gonna try to walk again. This is probably not gonna work out. I decided walking was the best option. The whole downtown area was gridlocked. Cars everywhere, people running inside, like signs bearing. No, 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 no hope of driving. Where's everyone going? Most of them are going home, I think. Yeah, I read this part. And you're running away from home. Once I made a decision, I stuck to it no matter how much I was filled with doubt. Half an hour and a half an hour is nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. 
already read this part. Stay off the major roads, especially roads that I knew led towards metro stations. Not that I was the only one who'd gotten that grand idea. Was there any danger? Like people attacking each other or something? No. Okay, subway station. Yeah, we've read this part. Well, a lot further than I'd gotten at that point. I could practically still see my apartment building, but the crowd was slowly thinning at least. I actually saw a vehicle in motion. Uh, yep, read this part. We have a group. The car thing didn't work. So we're going to look for a shelter. I found myself looking over my shoulder all the time, as if the flash could come at any time. Aren't you supposed to look away from the flash? Well, yeah, but how can I not? Some warning or something. The sirens are pointless. Weren't they supposed to warn when the event is imminent? Now we'd been out for at least an hour and no bombs yet. I think I would have just stayed home. Or done just about anything but head out into the open. You do that when you have this dream. I did what I did. So how long did you risk staying out? Should probably try to find a shelter. So what did you find? I was really starting to feel like getting caught outside close to all these buildings was a would be a very bad idea. When I saw a subway sign, I immediately headed that way. That was probably not very safe, though. I mean... It must have been packed. Oh, yes. As I got closer, I did see something that made my heart search. Policemen. Actual government workers. They were ushering everyone down below. And people were actually moving in a somewhat orderly fashion. Is your subway system bomb-proof? I have no idea. I was caught in the stream of people either way. And found myself shepherded below ground. It smelled of pee and vomit and body odor. And the crying and shouting made talking impossible. So regular Friday night at the underground. Funny. Anyway, there was actually some semblance of order down there. Policemen were giving people places to sleep. And also down on the tracks. Also down on the tracks. And you... Did I bring the sleeping bag? I did not. Ended up on the tracks. With nothing but the clothes on my back, pretty much. I just pulled my knees up to my chest and held my head down and waited for the end. At least you weren't alone. It had to be safer underground, right? I didn't feel safe, not at all. Someone could have knocked me out. Hell, someone probably could have shanked me, shanked me down there no one would have noticed. I was almost more frightened of the other people there than I was of the bombs. The bombs were just abstract th threats while all these panicking people were right here. What, no coming together of people? No great communion in the face of danger? Every man for himself. Anyway, apocalypse. So, it was real? I mean, in the dream? Yes, the first one was the worst because the light went out with it. I tried to make myself as small as I could, but I still got kicked once or twice by people running in a panic. A few moments later, there were flashlights out, police shouting, telling everyone to be calm. Be calm? Bullshit. The lights were out, it was completely, utterly pitch dark. The first one. There were more. I lost count. With every blast, there was this terrible sound from the roof, like it was crying out. Small pieces of it rained down with every rumble, and we all responded to its cry. Jesus Christ. Did the roof hold? It groaned. Rocks tumbled down. Someone got hit by one big enough to hurt. And they cried out. I don't think the station was very far underground at all. It hadn't been designed with bombings in mind. That must have been pretty harrowing. Not just for me. A lot of people got up and said they weren't going to stay. There was a surge of people. Panic was mounting again. It was quiet outside, but the policemen didn't want anyone leaving yet. There was a lot of screaming. Some demanding to be let out. I had to stand up to avoid getting jostled or trampled again. What happened to the group that we were in? I mean, we're still in it. It's right here. What'd you do? That's when the final bomb hit. Close. Maybe it had been shot out, of course. Maybe. Who knows? I was looking towards the exit when it hit. I could see the firestorm sweep down into it, engulfing the hapless policemen and anyone who had been pushed against them to come out. Everyone screamed, but it drowned out by the sound of the roof beginning to fall. Dust covered everything. Holy shit, what did you do? When I finished cough after I finished copping, something was burning, so I could actually see, although I didn't particularly want to. What I saw was that most were either huddling down, praying to whatever god they had that they wouldn't be burned buried alive, or trying to escape. No one could get past the burning wreckage at the entrance, but the subway tunnels were wide open. Most were crowding into the tunnels leading westwards, away from the downtown area, but it was a stampede. 
the tunnels feeding west back where I came, from where I came were practically empty by comparison. I would get out of there if I were you, regardless of direction. Where did you go? Um... We're gonna go east. I rushed into the east tunnel, heedless of what came behind me. As I ran, I heard the collapse of the subway station behind me and saw it as all light went out. Ooh, shit. Good for you. You got out of that one. Good you got out of that one. Yeah. Except I realized I had lost my whole group. I was alone again. Hopefully they made it into the other tunnel, all right. Okay, see, now my social meter is gone. I had a flashlight, thank God. As I'd shown it around the tunnel, I realized to my amazement I was the only one who'd ran into it. Maybe the others had run into the parallel one, but I was alone here. I went back to the tunnel collapse, but it was just an insurmountable bar barrier of concrete and rebar. On the other side of which you might have been. Well, I don't know if... I don't know if where I was... Well, I don't know if where I was was much better. Okay. What if all the stations had collapsed? What if I was trapped in this tunnel, and wasn't that a hell of a lot more likely... And wasn't that a hell of a lot more likely closer to ground zero you get? Okay, now nope, I figured it out. I don't know why that whole page was as hard. Fair point. The thing was, I knew this line. This was my line, and the next stop was my stop. So, right back to zero. Pretty much. At least it was faster to walk underground than above ground. Had the station collapsed? Take a wild guess. Of course it had. That's not good. There was a similar pile block blocking the entrance here, but I shone my flashlight all over it, climbing up as high as I could, until I saw something amazing. The glint of metal. A train? Yep, it must have been in the station when the bombs hit. I started digging. I mean, this took a long while. A full day, at least. But in the end, I had unearthed the emergency exit at the back of a train car. And you got that one open, too? With some effort, I had no shortage of, shortage of blunt objects, though. When I stepped into it, I realized it was sunlight I was seeing further ahead. I could have cried. So you could get out? Yes, through one of the windows. I crawled through a short tunnel made out of debris. Careful not to look at what else was the tunnel was made out of. And crawled up into, well, pretty dim, foreboding sunlight. But still sunlight. And what did it look like? Better than the tunnel, but not by much. The sky was dark. A rain of ash was coming down. The city was burning, scorched, and ruined. A bit like me, probably crawling out of that hole. There's that picture again. Radioactive ash? Presumably, although I was too busy breathing in big gulps of fresh air to give a hoot. So what'd you do? Okay, we are at a new... new... Ability, a new day. <clears throat> do we want to get out of town or do we want to go to the apartment? We could attempt to find a boyfriend, I guess. Hmm. Let's find a boyfriend. Chess? My boyfriend. Blah, blah, blah. Dream boyfriend. How steady. Well, you know, I felt there was potential. Encouraging. So, going after Chess... Where would you start? At his apartment? It was just a few blocks from mine. Alright, so you did that? I thought I could go and check. What did it look like? The streets? Awful. Ruined buildings everywhere, charred by fire most of them. We had to pick our way between cars and debris and bodies. There were so many bodies. It makes me sick just to think about it. They were- who's we? We're, we're alone now. Must have been pretty difficult to travel. Yes, although it was oddly inconsistent. I think my building was the last one directly affected in the blast, but a block in the opposite direction there were mainly intact buildings. As much as you could call them intact, I guess. Still standing. What about others? Were there any other survivors on the street? 
Yeah, there were others. A lot of them were a lot worse off than me. Some were blind, others were burned, broken, or in shock. There, there just wasn't anything I could do. Where was the government? I don't know, no one knew. I hadn't heard a single ambulance siren since the event. For all we knew, there was nothing left. Oh, oh it, it, it did a bing. Did you have the key? No. So... I came to his door, and it was locked, obviously. Hmm. I knocked anyway. No one answered. I thought briefly about going around to his neighbors, but why would any of them have keys or want to help if they were even there? So what next? I stood by the door, feeling like an idiot, and considered my options. They were few. Let's check the fallout shelter. Was the shelter still there? Well, the building it had been in wasn't. I mean, it collapsed. It was just a pile of rubble and rebar and a charred mess of house innards. And the shelter? The rad bar itself was gone. I thought it was red. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how to read. Lost in the rubble. But I knew the shelter was itself was underground. I got as close as I could, but the entrance was definitely blocked. Holy shit. But there were probably people down there, too, weren't there? Yeah, and some of them were my friends. That is, if anyone survived. What did you do? D did the fallout continue to fall? Oh, yes. There was a lot of debris. I wasn't entirely sure I'd even be able to handle it alone. But what about the people potentially trapped underground? Like I said, there's only so much a single person can do. So what did you do? Try digging. That's a good trick. Well, the site was, like I said, a mess. First, there was a lot of rubble. A lot of it was very heavy, but there was something else. A van that someone had either smashed into a wall deliberately or accidentally. I managed to squeeze my way close enough to take a look, and sure enough, underneath the van was a hatch down into the shelter. Hmm. So what did you do? I tried. I really did. I worked until I felt like I was coughing my lungs out. But I couldn't do it. I was too weak. The van wouldn't budge. That must have been hard. I think I cried tears of frustration and promised myself I'd go to the gym more often. I was pretty distraught. So what'd you do instead? There's actually not much else to say. Huh? Well, I'd been feeling it for a long time already, but by then it... It just came to an end. I couldn't move anymore. I was too weak. I had to rest, but I couldn't even keep food down. In the end, I couldn't even stay conscious or talk. Radiation poisoning? Yes. Of the acute, bad kind. I suppose it wasn't lucky. I can't really say much more of my last time on Earth. I was too delirious, too out of it to really notice anything or realize anything anymore. I came in and out of it, but mostly I remember incredible pain whenever I was conscious. And thus concluded the dream. I didn't get the real ending, but... I think that's probably enough. I got like two endings here and back to the credits. This is an interesting little game. It's got some weirdness to some of its stuff. Um, like with how it was sort of seemed like it lost track of whether or not I had people with me. And there was that one instance where there was some typos. There was that one instance where there just wasn't a character marker for Alice's speech, but like, yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty interesting little game. Um, I'll go pull up the store page here. Okay, so the bottom of the well is the name of the game. I probably said that already. It is a visual novel. Sort of a roguelike. And, uh, it is free. So, that interested you? It's free. Go check it out. Pretty interesting little visual novel survival game thing. But that's... I don't have too much more to say about it. It was, you know... I mentioned my little gripe, but it's, it's got some... It's got a nice, nice, it's a nice vibe. 2016. Check it out if uh, you're into visual novel slash survival games or whatever. It's free. So yeah. That's 
you know what I have to say. So if you like this video, the like button. If you dislike this video, the dislike button. If you got in the description, you find a link to a beacons.ai link. It's got all my stuff in it. Twitter, Patreon, Bandcamp, Redbubble, etc. Links there. Click them and do what you do in those places. Subscribe if you want to keep up with uh, the things I do around the channel. Comment. Have you played this game? Let me know. Share the video. Do the things. Do the things. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.